Hey guys, gals, friends, and pals, this is Paul Eastex Twitch. We're celebrating the launch day of the TurboGrafx-16 Mini in North America. It's an Amazon-exclusive mini console. It's finally available after all this time. It was announced over a year ago. It took them forever to bring it to market. It was available in Japan for a couple months already for some reason, but we just got it. 100 bucks, a lot of great games. And it's got kind of an attract mode here. You can see I've set the border of the screen to look like a Turbo Express, which is the little portable Turbo Graphics console. Full color console. It was way fancier than a Game Boy. Although, of course, it just tore straight through batteries. I never had one because I wasn't rich. A friend of mine did, though. They were a bit rich. We've got the menu. The menu is divided up into English and Japanese games. So this is the American menu. Let's look through it. There's Alien Crush, a pinball game that is really cool. It has a sequel called Devil's Crush that a lot of people wish had been included. Blazing Lasers, which had a different name in Japan, something like Tatsujin or something. It is a classic vertically scrolling shoot 'em up. It's pretty well regarded. Dungeon Explorer is a really cool five player co op action RPG, very light on the RPG elements, but five player co op, sort of like Gauntlet, but longer. A really cool game. It got a sequel that is one of the best games ever released on the system. They did not include the sequel on the TurboGrafx-16 Mini, which is a drag. Moto Rudder, I don't know. Crummy 3D racing game, probably. Power Golf, also probably crummy. R-Type. Back in the day, this port of R-Type was like the closest you could get to the arcade version. The Sega Master System also had a good port, but this one was better. Victory Run, that's a 3D racing game. Don't know if it's any good or not. Chu Man Fu, some kind of action puzzle game. Don't know why they put that on here, I guess just for variety. JJ and Jeff is a really weird Americanization of a weird Japanese game called Kato and Ken. So it's like a adventure platforming game. And why would they include it? I don't know. No one cares about this game. Military Madness. This is one of the best games for the system, probably, at least early on. It's a hex-based strategy game, a turn-based strategy game. And it eventually got like a remake or a sequel for the Xbox 360 on Xbox Live Arcade. It's known, uh, the Japanese version is known as Nectaris. But I remember back in the day I played it and I was impressed by like just how easy it was to learn and get into. It's kind of deep, like Advanced Wars, I guess. Then we got Newtopia, which is the TurboGrafx-16 equivalent of Zelda. You know, like how the Sega Genesis had Crusader of Senti. TurboGrafx-16 had Newtopia. There also was Newtopia 2, which I think maybe they only included the Japanese version of. I don't know. We'll have to see. But there's a sequel that's better, so why isn't it included in English? I don't know. Ninja Spirit. This is an arcade port of a little-known arcade game. A really great uh, action platformer, ninja-themed. Really cool game. Psychosis is a strange horizontally scrolling shoot 'em up. It's a neat game, I guess. Space Harrier, this is a port of the classic Sega arcade game. I love Sega games being included on this sucker. Then we've got Splatterhouse. This is a port of the Namco action platformer. Not really a platformer, just kind of an action game. It's a horror themed game. It was actually like incredibly macabre for back in the day. And the American version is a little bit censored. Ease Book 1 and 2. This is, at the time, it was one of the best action RPGs ever made. It still has one of the best soundtracks of any game ever made. Beautiful soundtrack. We probably have to look at that for a minute. Then we got Bonk's Revenge. This is a sequel to Bonk's Adventure. I said we were streaming Bonk's Adventure. For some reason, they only included the Japanese version of Bonk's Adventure, I think. Which makes no sense. So you can play the first game in Japanese with, I mean, it has like next to no text. And then there's, here's part two. There also was part three, which they did not include for no particular reason. Then we got Kadash. This is a port of a Namco action platformer arcade game. This has two player co-op, I think. Parasol Stars. This is a sequel to Bubble Bobble. And uh, it is also two player co-op. Airzonk, this is a like a spin-off of the Bonk's Adventure series. It's a futuristic side-scrolling shoot-em-up with kind of a sense of humor. 
And oh look, there's Newtopia 2. Why are these games not in alphabetical order? So Newtopia 2 is here in English. That's good to see. Two great Zelda-style games to enjoy. New Adventure Island. This is like a remake or a sequel to Adventure Island with nice graphics. Never got ported to anything else. Soldier Blade, side-scrolling shoot 'em up Bomberman 93, you know I love me some Bomberman. Then we've got Lords of Thunder, which was a CD-ROM game. It's got an incredible soundtrack. It's a side-scrolling shoot 'em up Anyway, so that's the American games. Let's go see what's on the Japanese side of things. Select console, you pick the PC Engine. Ooh, fancy transition. Different music. So you got the Kung Fu here. Is this a port of Irem's Kung Fu arcade game? I don't know. Jesseken Necromancer. I don't know what this is. Galaga 88. This is probably my favorite Galaga game. It is a really, really good sequel to Galaga. We'll have to play that. Fantasy Zone. This is a port of the Sega arcade game. Great game. I actually bought this for the Switch recently. It's cool to get this particular version included. Dragon Spirit. This is a classic Namco arcade game. It's a vertically scrolling shoot 'em up in which you play as a dragon, which is pretty sweet. There was an NES port of Dragon Spirit too. This one is much closer to the arcade. Apare Gate Ball or Gate Ball. Yeah, it's got Gato Ball is how they how it's spelled in Japanese. I don't know what that is. Hey, here's Nectaris, the Japanese version of Military Madness. So they included some doubles in the game selection. It kind of pads out the game selection, having Japanese and American. But it is cool to be able to see what the Japanese one was like in some instances. Speaking of which, here's Japanese Dungeon Explorer. Then we have Japanese Newtopia. That's a nice cover. I like it. Kind of classic 80s anime style. PC Genjin. Yeah, this is Bonk's Adventure. This is part one of that series. I don't know why they wouldn't include the English version too, but again, there's just like no text. It's just a platformer. This was the TurboGrafx-16 mascot. Then we got Japanese Ease 1 and 2. Super Darius. This is really cool. Darius is a long-running shoot 'em up series, and this particular game was released for both the TurboGrafx and the Super Graphics, or I think it supports the Super Graphics, which was like a very limited console like they only made like six games for it and maybe two games that were for the regular console but they supported the super as well so anyway uh you know the sega genesis classic has a darius game on it so i guess they felt they needed to include a darius on here too probably two player co-op the genji and the heike clans this is a classic namco arcade game don't remember much about it some kind of action platformer Super Star Soldier. This is a sequel to Star Soldier. A really cool vertically scrolling shoot 'em up. Hugely popular in Japan. Here's one of the coolest games that they included Daima Kaimura, which is also known as Ghouls and Ghosts. This is an arcade port of Capcom's super hard Ghouls and Ghosts action platformer. The Sega Genesis also had Ghouls and Ghosts. This version here is much closer to the arcade. It was released for the Super Graphics only in Japan, so this is a true 16-bit game and one that a lot of people never got to play that version. Then we have The Legend of Valkyrie, which I think is an arcade port by Namco. We've got All Dines. This is a side-scrolling shoot-'em-up. It is also Super Graphics exclusive. I actually owned this one and Daima Kamura before I sold them. Sere Senshi Spriggan. Spriggan was a popular shoot 'em up in Japan. I think it also had a part two. They got Japanese Newtopia 2. I like that cover. It's, you know, very anime style. Here we have Gradius. Gradius was not released in America for the Turbo Graphics, which makes no sense, right? Because the NES game was popular and the arcade game was decently popular. But here you got a port of the original Gradius. That's cool. Then check this out Salamander, which is also known as Life Force. This was released on the NES in America, and it was popular. This one has two-player co-op, I think. It's a sequel or a spin-off of Gradius. Super Momotaro Densetsu 2. They have made a spelling error here. It's Densetsu, not Dentetsu. Anyway, this is, like a, I think, like a board game with story to it. Popular series in Japan for a long time. 
uh, from the people who made Bomberman. And Momotaro, I think, has cameoed in a Bomberman game. I could be wrong. Check out this one, Ninja Ryukinden. This is Ninja Gaiden. This is like an enhanced port of the NES Ninja Gaiden game. Really cool inclusion here. But a lot of you guys have forgotten about Ninja Gaiden, right? Used to be a very popular action platformer. Oh, and there were the Xbox Ninja Gaiden games too, which are 3D. Star Parodier. This is a really neat inclusion. This is a shoot 'em up that also is like a parody. It's got Bomberman and other stuff in it. So that's pretty fun. Spriggan Mark II. Look at that. They did include Spriggan II. How cool. I don't understand why these games aren't included alphabetically. Maybe it's by release date or something. Snatcher. This is a game that I think it came out on Sega CD in English, but the PC Engine version and the 3DO version never got brought to America in English. So you can play this really cool visual novel, which is by Hideo Kojima of Metal Gear, I think. And it's, uh, I don't know, it's sort of like an ode to Blade Runner and Cyberpunk stuff. But it's not in English, so you would have to use a guide if you wanted to play through and enjoy it. Gradius 2, which is a CD game. I used to own this, I sold it. But it's uh, another side-scrolling shoot-em-up. Really great game. Choaniki, this is a long-running series. I think they still make these every now and then. It's a shoot-em-up series that has, like, I don't know, it's like a homoerotic shoot 'em up series it's kind of humorous and weird akuma joe dracula x chino rondo this is castlevania dracula x rondo of blood this game foolishly was never brought to america it was like the killer app for the console in japan they didn't bring it out over here so people never got to play it in english until the psp version eventually came out and you can also get it on playstation 4 but this is a really really great action platformer Bomberman 94, this is the best Bomberman game ever made until Saturn Bomberman came along. So Tarkoni, did you ever play Bomberman 94? My friends and I used to have so much fun with this. It's five player competitive. It's a super good game and it introduced the Louis, the kangaroos that Bomberman can ride on. Don't make noise. Bomberman Panic Bomber, this is a CD game. It's a falling block puzzle game featuring Bomberman characters. I never really especially cared for it, you know, but it's neat that they included it. Ginka Fuke Densetsu Sapphire. See, they spelled Densetsu correctly there. That's so funny that they just had a typo in the other one. Anyway, this for a long time was one of the very rarest games for the Japanese console. It would sell for over $200. It probably still does. It supported the arcade CD-ROM. Like, basically, there was a, a RAM card you could buy, and you needed it to play certain games, like Sapphire. So it does... It takes advantage of that extra RAM to have better graphics and faster loading and stuff. And that's it. That's all the games. Oh, and by the way, at the bottom, it tells you how many players everything is. Like, see, Sapphire, those two icons there, it means it's two-player. Mm -hmm. Panic Bomber supports the multi-tap for five-player, as does Bomberman 94. Same. Rondo of Blood, just one player. So, I don't know what the four little symbols off to the left of it are for, but, you know, at least there's a way to tell how many players everything is. So, I believe I promised you guys some Bonk's Adventure. Let's hop right into that one if I can find it. The game menu, it's confusing. Haha. <laughs> um, which direction was it? Since they're not in any kind of order, is there a sorting? There's got to be a way to sort them. Oh, yeah, they were sorted by release date. A through Z, that makes life a little easier. Look at that! It simulates putting the hue card into the console. How cool! <laughs> Can drop this. So you know the Japanese Turbo Graphics was called the PC Engine. So this game is PC Genjin, and it's like a like a play on words. You know, it's like PC Caveman, and it shows you what it stands for. Most expensive game? What do you mean, Icky? Oh, D and D days. Well, that's fun. All right, here goes. Yeah, Thyrenia and Val play some kind of... I mean, Thyrenia and Wolf play, play some kind of pen and paper RPG on Wednesdays as well. But they got out early enough. So here we go. We're a caveman, and he kills enemies by bonking them on the head. <laughs> Isn't he cute? And the music's pretty catchy, even though it's simple. You can bounce the enemies around. <laughs> Soccer. One thing you might notice, there's no parallax scrolling. The PC Engine 
and Turbo Graphics hardware wasn't very good at parallax scrolling. Like some games have it, but not a lot of games do. So unfortunately, a lot of the games are really flat like this. Although it looks like the moon might be on its own layer up there. They're probably doing that by making it a sprite. <laughs> Sorry, I hate slicing you in half. Pathfinder, pretty much D&D, he says. So I wonder what this console has as far as, like, save states and such. The more times you bounce an enemy around on your head, the more points you get. Sometimes they'll give you an item or something. There's some secrets here and there. Oh god, that's a bad guy. Just let him go. I don't need that guy. So when you hit him, it's not damaged. Wow, really, Lendar? I didn't know that. Where'd you read it? If there's a list of the secrets, I want to hear about them. Maybe on Reddit? Oh, okay, that's cool, human Brian. So this has got a really cool selection of games. Oh, look, when Bonk eats meat, he powers up. <laughs> it's cute. He can bonk the ground and it stuns enemies. Hey, get back here. Why did you turn blue? Just his clothes change because he's powered up. Hmm. If I remember correctly, his powered up sprite is slightly different in the Japanese version than the American version. Invincible. Give me that. No, oh, I didn't get it. Wasting time not even getting the smileys. Watermelon. Ah, from Metal Jesus. Interesting. I hope everybody else is still with us. Chicago, Dark Six, Mong Box. Alright, we beat a level. Do you guys want me to play one more level? Well, actually, yeah, we should go until we get a boss, right? Like, I gotta represent Bonk's adventure properly. Too bad Royal Bob's not here. He seemed to be pretty interested in the Bonk games. Oh yeah, and Bonk can climb with his teeth for some reason. He's got a lot of personality in his sprite. Mm -hmm. He looks like a monkey sometimes and not a monkey at the times. What is a caveman? Well, I know, but... Ah, dang it. That's my health in the upper left corner. Uh, okay, I've, I've got to get it together. Yay, Dark Six is still here. We love you, buddy. By the way, the Bonk series was not only limited to the Turbo Graphics and PC Engine. There were a couple of Game Boy Bonk games. There was, I think, just one Super Nintendo game. I could be wrong. And there was even an arcade game. So it did get around to other platforms, which is good, because, you know, the... Ooh, it dropped two pieces of meat. The Turbo Graphics and the PC Engine, you know, they were the most popular system in Japan for a long time. Not that big in the U.S., unfortunately, because the American branch of the company was just utterly inept. Neat. Thyrenia says she played on Game Boy. Yeah, it was quite a good game on Game Boy. Ah! Die, fool. So you can get farther by spinning. Like, kind of floats you around some. Oh, golly gosh. There we go, and I should get to the boss soon. It's either at the end of the next level, or it's just right away. Yeah, that's true. So, we were behind as far as, like, the... A lot of times, games that looked really hot right at first when they came out in Japan, we would get them a couple years later in America. Like, there was this JRPG, Dragon Slayer Legend of Heroes. That series is still around on, like, the Vita and stuff like that. I played one on the PSP, as a matter of fact. I'm gonna die. No dying. But anyway, Dragon Slayer was positively ancient looking by the time they finally gave it to us in English. And that's a shame. Hey, Look at that fruit. What's things. this dinosaur going to do? Let's find out. Ah, oh, there we go. Charming. <laughs> now I'm swimming around inside of the dinosaur. There's his uvula. Are you being digested? <laughs> well, I guess I would if I stayed here long enough. Oh, Can't come that's back a bad guy. From that. 
Can I hit him? I'm scared to hit him. Okay, don't do that. That's what I learned. Just avoid those. Well, Bonk's not just gonna take it lying down. But I mean, he wanted to go in. I don't remember this part very well because, like, I'm scared of those things and I have no life, so I gotta be really cautious. But the boss is at the end of this area. Nope! Dang it. Okay, where's he gonna restart me? Oh, he's so. He's just sleeping peacefully. But now what? <laughs> Bonk. Oh, you push star and he comes back. Okay. You just respawn right there. That's good. I was afraid I'd get knocked back a lot. When I normally play this, I would have B on turbo. So I'm going to put that on turbo. That'll make life a little easier. Way easier to hit the enemies that way. Ooh, meat. Let's just eat it. Oh, he loves the meat. Dead. Well, I never said I was never going to die. I mean, these are classic games. They're quite challenging. What is this little... What are those sperms? No. Okay, good. At least I don't think so. Okay. They're not usually found in the stomach. Well, what are they? They don't make any sense. Uh, I still got hit. Could be ancient it. bacteria. Okay, fine. Too much turbo? Well, I don't know how to get by those. Polyps, maybe. Can dinosaurs get diverticulitis? Uh, I could not tell you. Did they? Well, they dino might. How about that? Mm hmm. Oh it's no, look, select. it's poop. I'm breaking through poop. If you hold and select heart. and press 1 to start Salamander, you get an arcade yeah. version. Glad to know that. All right, let's fight the boss. Here we're going to show off one of the special things about the Turbo Graphics. It could do really large sprites compared to the Super Nintendo and the Genesis. The Super Nintendo eventually did get some really big sprites in like Super Metroid and whatnot, but it was fairly common on the Turbo Graphics to fight big bosses. Like, look at that. He's huge. Also, I love this boss music. Very catchy. Don't hit the bubbles. Don't. Okay, just hit him from the side. I believe they're snot bubbles. I'm bouncing on his head. Breaking his horns off. They don't do it when the bubbles are there. Fight him until he's not horny anymore. Sometimes that's what you have to do. Cracking the eggshell. Look at that big dinosaur. Well, trust me. I mean, remember the Turbo Graphics was contemporary with the NES and the Sega Genesis. You just didn't get a. Great, I'm gonna die. Ah. I'm so out of practice. I used to actually be, you know, like really good at all the games that I owned. Because when you're a kid, you just play them a ton, right? But I'm just trying to beat this level anyway, and then I can quit. Stop hitting me! Nope. So that's too much spinning, obviously. You're a jerk, Mr. Dinosaur. Love it. There we go. See, it's hard to, like, point yourself specifically down. Like, in a modern game, they let you, like, just... Besides the spinning, you'd have a way just to drop straight down. Hey, look at that. He's happy. And he says, like, thank you, Bonk, or something. It's a shame they did not give us the English version of Part 1. But, again, it's, like, so little text, and it doesn't matter. <laughs> All the smileys I got give me bonus points, I think. That's so funny. Um, yeah. <laughs> I thought he was a very sexy dinosaur. Oh, so sexy. This music is also quite good. So that is Bonk's Adventure. Again, that was like the TurboGrafx-16's answer to Super Mario Brothers and Sonic the Hedgehog. And, you know, like, 
little cute caveman is not as sexy as Sonic the Hedgehog or, or Mario, but still quite an endearing character and great game. I don't know. He's human. They're not. I'm just going to put that out there. Well, yeah, I suppose you're right. Check it out. I can save. And I've got four save slots, so that's what those little symbols mean. It lets you know how many saves you've got going for that game. All right. Return to menu. Well, they did drop the ball. But, you know, you can you mod that PS Classic and it gets a little better. Gradius 2. You can buy memory cards that just specifically have tons of extra games. You know, they sell it on... It's like USB sticks. Check it out. We're playing a CD game, so it simulated the start of a CD game. This is Gradius 2, by the way. It's an enhanced port of the arcade game. Yeah, I mean, Sony had hubris and incompetence. A dangerous combination. Gradius 2. So you can pick from four different weapon arrays. We'll go with just the standard. Curtain shooters, is that what some people call this? I love shoot 'em ups that aren't bullet hell games. Bullet hell is not for me. That's when the screen is just like utterly filled with bullets and you have to use tricks to avoid the patterns of the bullets and stuff. And it's, it's not that fun. Oh crap. There we go. I need some turbo. See, I collect these little things, and then at the bottom I can choose to activate them when I have enough for whichever power-up I'm going for. The music is really, really good. Like, it, remember, it's CD quality. The Gradius games always had great music anyway, but then you got this great Red Book version of it. Ah, Ooh. and yeah, it's pretty exciting right from the get-go. Now I've got a laser. No, please don't kill me, Mr. Dragon. Oh. Ah, he didn't kill me. Good. Big, beautiful planets. Simulated it's solar parallax. Flare. Yeah, there you go. There's oh, solar sun. flare. Why did I say planet? You're right. That's a sign. Hey, BX Latino Heat, thank you for joining us. I know I didn't send out a newsletter because I was so busy today, but I did tweet and announce the stream on Facebook, so perhaps that helped us catch a few extra people, I hope. Actually, you know, you could tell a thousand people about your stream and like five of those people will actually check out the stream. It's just like the frustrating nature of being a, a smaller streamer. Matt Young and I were just talking about that because, you know, he streams on Thursdays. And he's trying to get his stream going, and it's, you know, very challenging for him to get new viewers as well. God, that dragon just won't let up. I wonder if he... Oh, I killed him. All right, that's mm -hmm. better. So I need to get an option, but they're not giving me any, like, power-up crystals to use. Perfect Zero is still here. Good mm -hmm. to see you, dude. You sure you don't want to be on mic, Perfect Zero? Yeah, this is a really good game, and it's got some big, beautiful bosses, and again, a, a phenomenal soundtrack. There's good replay value because you got the different like power-up systems you can pick from at the beginning of the game. Nice. There we go. I shouldn't be saying like so much. Turned into an amateur. So the the option it fires along with you, it doubles your firepower. Nice. Yeah, and you can have more than one. Shoot the head! Nice. Oh god! Whoa, god! That's a lot. Ah. Can we do this? I want to do a save state. Is he getting hurt? Can anyone tell? Like, the good news is, yeah, ah, I think he is. Yes, we did it. Oh my god. <laughs> I died right it. That's oh, not fair. No. It's no okay. No safe's going allowed. I should have said Phoenix. Going. He'll rise from the ashes. Well, he will, but I won't. <laughs> With the start yeah, that button, was a drag. Will. Yeah, sometimes they're spaceships, sometimes they're aliens and monsters. We're just, we're not going to save. But that was Gradius 2, really great port of the arcade game. Galaga 88. Got to show you guys Galaga 88, my favorite Galaga game. Oh, no worries, Perfect Zero. Yes. I hope you're having fun with your Assassin's Creed. Okay, mm -hmm. we'll do ease after Galaga, because Galaga shouldn't take too long. 
Okay, you can start out as a dual ship oh, and have cool. one life left, or you can... So that's a neat option, because, you know, in Galaga, part of the fun is getting your ship captured and then rescuing it. Mm-hmm. So, in America, this was called Galaga 90, because they released it here two years late. There's the classic Galaga music, but a little bit fancier. You still can only move left and right. You can't move up and down like you would be able to in many other shoot 'em ups. The enemies look a lot prettier. Player ships maybe a little bit derpy looking. Not quite as iconic as the regular Galaga ship. Stage two. Yeah, I seem to remember this had power ups. I could be wrong. It's been quite a long time since I played it. Since 1990? And there's the Galaga commander ships somewhere around 1990, between 90 and maybe 92. Ah! Nice explosion effects. I'm trying to get my ship captured at least. I know we all want to see that. Do your capturing animation, Mr. Buddy. Is he going to do it? Not yet, I guess. Just like. Maybe the one that's not angry will do it. Yeah. There. Captured. Yeah, I mean, the fidelity of the music is a nice improvement. One cool thing you can do, you know, the Turbo Graphics 16 has turbo, right? So I've got turbo on one of my buttons, but not on the other. So when I want to have turbo, I can just use one button. And then when I want to do like a single shot, like just then, then I can hit the other button. Just a good option since it uses both buttons for firing. That is galactic dancing. This is one of the bonus levels. Catchy music. Whimsical. Yeah, the TurboGrafx-16 was an excellent shoot 'em up system. That's true. Above all, it had super good shoot 'em ups. Yeah. Good job. Ah, hiccup. Ouch. Call me Brian. So you can tell... Oh, look, a different planet. But you can tell it's basically just a fancier... You know, a fancier, prettier version of the original Galaga. Like, it doesn't change too much. Like, Galaga Legions for the Xbox 360 and Windows Phone and all that didn't feel like a Galaga game very much. This actually feels just like the original, but with some minor improvements, you know? So, really cool way to do the game. The portable system was called the Turbo Express. We're going to go ahead and leave Galaga there. I just wanted to show you guys what that was like. Now, Ease 1 and 2... This is going to be like a longer, longer playthrough. Simulating the original TurboGrafx CD. Oh, that's a shame, Lindar. I never cared for Punch-Out to begin with. Having to play Punch-Out is a, a punishment for me. So if you're ever mad at me, just make me play Punch-Out or Super Punch-Out. Although Super Punch-Out is very pretty. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> so East, this... The first American Ease game was on the Master System. Sega Master System never got Ease 2 in America, I don't think. You can already hear some really great music. I hope you guys can hear it. If it's too quiet, let me know. This had phenomenal voice acting. Like, the music and the voice acting and the cinematics are what make this version of Ease so special. And, like, there's there are new nice home releases of Ease. Like, the Steam version of Ease 1 and 2 is really nice. You can get them on your mobile phone, and those are nice. But none of them have the same soundtrack, the exact same one, as this. You know, this particular version of the soundtrack is uniquely special. Agreed, Lindar. Yeah, the game tells you, so that's... Like, there's once you've played a proper Ease game, you'll know, because it says it. I'm just going to watch the long intro. Are the East people? It's a place. Oh. East, the ideal utopia. Once a country so peaceful and prosperous. A country where children was free as the wind. I believe this narrator. Harmony blew through the hearts of all men. 
is Alan Oppenheimer, who uh, does has done a lot of acting and voice acting. He's the voice of Falcor in The NeverEnding Story. That's funny, Lendar. That would be very frustrating for me. The goddesses of ease. Ease part one on phones is very good, but it gets super hard at the end, like stupidly hard. Like you can't just beat it without cheating somehow. Just this one boss fight, the boss moves in such a way that the touchscreen controls can't keep up with it. Mirror, mirror. Look at that. I used to find that very hot as a young lad. Ancient ease vanished. God, I love that music. I hope you guys can hear it okay. <laughs> yeah, in Japanese that says isu, which is for us ease. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Chicago. Hey, that was totally it. <laughs> Good to see you, Matt. So that was our intro, and by the way, we're skipping some long loading times that the original games had. That's the nice thing about emulation, is they can ease up the loading times in CD games. So I guess we should look at what the actual game looks like, right? It's not as fancy as the intro. It is like an older... It's a port of a computer game, right? And a, a game that also was released on the NES in Japan and Sega Master System in America. So it's not the most advanced game from a gameplay perspective, but the East series still exists today. Like, there's one on the Xbox One and PlayStation 4. And there's a bunch on Steam that you can get. Beginning. Just love this classic 80s anime art style. Now we've got more intro. Can't get enough. In the beginning. More beautiful music. At all, the protagonist of the series, he's in every single game. Fina comes back in some of the games. That's really cool, Thyrenia. A lot of the games start out with him arriving somewhere on a ship. Lydia. Again, remember, if you were used to playing on the Sega Genesis and the NES, then cinematics like these were truly incredible back then. Like, there's just such so much art, you know? And some of it's really large, and you wouldn't get a whole lot of that on weaker consoles that didn't have CD-ROM storage. That's the main villain dark fact. I think that's Luda Gemma. Got him. Oh, look at that, look at that. I love it. Yeah, stars in our eyes for you. Cat aggressively asking to be petted. Yeah, that's true, Eki. Japanese RPGs in the old days certainly had better presentation. I agree, Chicago. Nice. Look at that animation. Darm. Yeah, I can agree with that. I mean, Japanese games often have wonderful cinematics. Music. Very good music. Yes. By the way, this this particular version soundtrack was done or mastered by Yuzo Koshiro. You know, Yuzo Koshiro is a very popular 16-bit composer. He did the original Streets of Rage soundtrack, and he did one or two tracks on Streets of Rage 4. Ooh, the Ultima games had really good intros, Lendar says. Yeah, you're right, I remember Ultima 7 had quite an intro on the PC. Yeah, it is very sad that Origin is not around anymore. <laughs> yeah. So you can see visually this looks a lot like an NES game. Like, if you saw me play Crystallis on the SNK 40th Anniversary Collection. It looks a lot like Crystallis, but it is more colorful than an NES game could be. 
Like these sprites have quite a lot of color and there's background colors. Please follow me to my shop. I kind of want to get out to the first action scene and then we'll call it quits from there. Here's my store. Please come in. Sure, why not? They have these nice character portraits, even in the Sega Master System game, I think. Something terrible is going to happen in this country. You're the only one who can save us. However, you'll need the proper weapon for your battles. If I remember correctly, she gets killed later. I could be wrong. Spoiler. Boom. <laughs> what the heck, Matt Wrestling? Oh, going into the bicycle shop? Please purchase a sword, a shield, and armor from the weapon shop. In your turn, I'll tell you what to do. So, she wants me to go get equipped, and then she'll give me instructions. Oh. My father is the mayor of Zeptic Village. He seems worried lately. Will you go and see what troubles him so? So i got to find the shop. I think it's there over here. Do I have enough gold? i got a thousand. Can I buy a long... Nope, I don't have enough for that. Short sword. He's got a real 80s, 70s stash going on there. Did I buy one yet? Exit. Now you did. Okay. Let's buy the shield. Small shield. Oh, that's too much. Chain armor, 400. Okay. So, I don't have enough money yet. I probably have to go out and earn it. But before I do that, I can equip some stuff. So let's equip the sword. It's not automatically equipped. Equip the armor. As you get more, it'll be filled out to the right. You know, back in the day, that was kind of cool. Speed. Well, let's set the game to faster. I guess that makes it move a little bit faster. That's a nice option. And we could save anywhere. Minea Town. Saved. Yes, so we're going to run out, hit a few bad guys. That's a good point, Icky. I don't think I ever played a gothic game. This music is really catchy. I've always really liked it. By the way, there's an anime adaptation of Ease Part 1 and 2. Or maybe just Part 1, but I remember it was pretty good. It even had some of the music from the games like this. So the way the fights work in this game is weird and kind of dated even. It was designed for like PC players who didn't have a controller. You have to just run into the enemies at an angle. If you run it into them exactly head on, you'll get hit. But if you touch them at a slight angle, then they get hit. And that's just how the combat works. Like eventually you'll get spells where you can shoot fireballs and stuff. But it's always a little bit weird. And I think the new mobile game and like the Steam port and stuff let you have an actual attack button. But I could be wrong. But I mean, you could be pretty good and still get hit every now and then because just the alignment thing is hard to manage at times. But, you know, they expect you to just go out there and build up and earn a lot of money and stuff before you can progress anymore. Another thing to note, like Crystallis and other games, games of this era, you know, like sometimes they don't give you quite enough hints to go on to know what to do. So if you're playing it as a modern player, you may occasionally get stuck and have to use a guide for help. But thank goodness, nowadays we have the internet, so you don't have to, like, go out and try to buy the right magazine that might have tips. You know, you can just use the internet and look up where to go from where you are. Did I mention this series? It's still going strong. They're 3D now, you know, but they still, like, usually have an overhead view like this. And, I mean, I'm really happy that Falcom, the makers of the game, is still around making these games and other games. Those guys are a pain. Anyway, let's just go ahead and save. Kind of reminds me of the Dragon Quest. I mean, it's certainly contemporary of Dragon Quest, but it plays a lot differently since it's not a turn-based RPG. Right. Hey, thank you very much for the follow, Mr. Sari Jeinfeld. That's a complicated name. Sari Jeinfeld, you're not our, our guy who makes tons of dupe accounts, are you? Because your name's a little bit similar to his. Hopefully not, because I don't need that drama. Yeah, that's true. Game FAQs was a big help when it came around. Before it was Game FAQs, wasn't it Secrets of the Sega Sages? I like Quite a long time ago. Yeah, anyway, for this game, Ease 1 and 2, you're going to get like 20 hours of gameplay out of it. 
beautiful cinematics and music. It's truly something that you should experience as a part of action RPG history. I'm going to do Alien Crush right now, but if you guys want to help me pick what to show you next. It's time for some pinball action. It's got to be a one player only game, not a two player game. Fast or slow? Uh, we'll just do fast. We're not. You got two different tunes to pick from. We'll do Lunar Eclipse. And look at that. It's a freaky looking pinball table. It's really aliens. So, of course, you control the left flipper and the right flipper. And yeah, everything is very alien and interesting looking. It's obviously inspired by the artwork of H.R. Geiger, yes. which is great. Definitely Geiger. Heck yeah. But I mean, if compared to other home pinball games, like, do you remember NES Pinball, where it's just like a really simple looking game and Mario's at the bottom and that was about it? But compared to other home pinball games, this was quite incredible. Eventually, Sonic Spinball came out on the Sega Genesis. And that one got more creative than the average pinball game, but until then, this was like the most amazing home pinball game you could get. The two things on the side look like mitochondria. They make me happy. <laughs> Neat. <laughs> right there. <laughs> and I think I might have mentioned it earlier, but this got a sequel called Devil's Crush that we sadly did not get in America. And I think there is a modern spiritual successor to that series that's about to come out or just came out. I forget what it was called, though. And yes, Icky, the two kidney-looking things. I want to... I think there's like a mini-game if you get up to the very top. It's hard to get up there. Oh, hey, there we go. Let's fight the big alien centipede. Nice. Sucks to you. One more piece. Come on, we could do this. No! Oh, I was so close. But hey, I got some bonus points. Ah! Is Rondo of Blood on there? Yes, Castlevania Dracula X Rondo of Blood is on here. You guys want to see that next? I'm happy to play it. So that was Alien Crush. Just wanted to show off a little pinball action. And there it is right there. I had this back in the day. Like, it was such a killer app. And the fact that they never brought it to America is ridiculous. Because it would have helped sell systems. That's right, Dark Six, because there was no English version for this platform. It's a shame they didn't actually, like, specifically translate it, you know, create a new translated version. But what can we do? You don't have to be able to speak Japanese to appreciate it. Right now it's speaking German. And by the way, in the newer versions, they re-recorded the audio for this part. Very atmospheric, beautiful. Yep, those things are helpful, Lindar. I basically, you know, I owned it as a teenager, and I, like, I accomplished every little thing you could do on my own. You know, there were no guides for games like this back then. I think this lady's a sacrifice, or she may be a... Does anybody remember how the exact story goes? Kind of like the start of the Castlevania anime when they kill Dracula's wife. But I don't think she's supposed to be. You can see these guys don't seem to be very good guys. Live by the sword. Uh -oh. Somehow they woke Dracula up, and that's not good. So this is a prequel to Symphony of the Night, Castlevania Symphony of the Night. So it's a prequel to the Castlevania anime. You could think of it like that. It happens just a little bit before that. And it stars Richter Belmont, who... Uh, actually, no, the anime is about Trevor Belmont, right? Yes. I forget. Yeah, this is a beautiful game, and it also has a phenomenal soundtrack. You can buy the soundtrack for like 10 bucks on Amazon with Rondo of Blood and Symphony of the Night. Hmm. So you get like 40 tracks. Nice. Yes. Human Brian, did you ever play through any of the Castlevania games? creaky door sound beautiful chanting 
You could put in some special names here to get like extra lives and stuff. I forget exactly what they were though. So we're just gonna be, of course. <laughs> Yay, Tyler! Keep Tyler with us in our hearts. So you put your name in, then you go and play on the file. It's a little bit clunky to have to go back like that, but them's the breaks. There's a sound test. The technic or technique option lets you like view boss fights, like perfect boss fights, in case you need help with a boss or something. Mm. And it tracks how many continues. You have unlimited continues, but it does tell you how many it took you to beat the game or whatever. Mm -hmm. So now we get more introduction. Richter Belmont. Approaching the vampire infestation. Uh oh, something's not right. Necromancy. Got yep, got a bad case of the skeletons. You got some big armored warriors. <laughs> that would be really neat, Lindar, but I doubt it. Here's, I think that's Anne or somebody. This game has like uh, a few different NPCs you can rescue. And it's been quite a while since I played through the English version on the PSP, so I don't really remember what role they play, other than you can get a companion character called Maria. He looks like one of the people from it. That was nice and dramatic. Yeah, Richter is related to Trevor Belmont, who I think is the guy in the anime. I could be wrong. Somebody around... Somebody who knows the anime should be around to correct us. A mini 3DO would be neat. You know... Mm -hmm. The 3DO was the first 32-bit console that you could buy at home. And it didn't have a great library, but it did have some unique games that had never been ported to anything else. And it'd be so cool to be able to play those at home. So here we do have some parallax scrolling. I don't know how Konami did it, but you got some great parallax in the background. There's the Grim Reaper. We were just talking about him the other day. Ow. I do not remember how to play. Come on, Paul. Haha, <laughs> broke your scythe. <laughs> I say no, no. Yeah, Lendar Gex was kind of the Turbo Graphic, I mean, the 3DO's killer app, if I remember correctly. Ah, did you see that backflip? That's a hard move to pull off. It's not that hard, but I still did it. And he's like, ta ta, see you later. Bye. Bye boy. You meet him as a character again in the sequel, Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Stage one. Yes. So we'll go ahead and play through the first stage. Then we'll just have to see how long it is. At least they're the lumbering zombies and not the really fast ones. <laughs> yes, that's a plus. There are faster enemies, though, eventually. Well, you can I choose between the sub weapons. You got the dagger, which flies forward, and the axe, which flies at an upward angle. I like the axe better. He just automatically died. So this town is made to look like one of the towns in Castlevania 2. Castlevania 2 is not a very good game in its normal English form. Killed him with an axe. It had a really bad translation, and you basically could not figure out how to play the game without consulting a guide. Like, nobody could. It would be impossible to ever beat the English version of Castlevania 2 without a guide. Because mm. it's a huge. I mean, just a huge, expansive map, and, like, the very esoteric solutions to puzzles and stuff. I first kind of sell was a Oh, missed. Atari 2600 or the Atari 7800, Icky? You know, I showed off that book before the stream last time. I don't know if you got to see it on Saturday. Ah, this guy, he's a pain. See, he's fast. Mm -hmm. Makes this nice scream when he dies. Oh, you mean this game? Yeah, no, keep in mind, the TurboGrafx-16 is essentially an 8-bit console. It's got a 16-bit graphics processor, but everything else about it is 8-bit. So, I mean, the developers accomplished some really amazing things given the age of the hardware and whatnot. 
Ah, I hate that enemy. This guy's in Symphony of the Night, too. So I'm taking an alternate path. One of the special things about Rondo of Blood is that it has multiple pathways. So you can get to hold different stages just by discovering the right path. Those guys are all pointing the other way, but let's see what's over here. Mandragora, I think, or something like that. Fight these in Symphony of the Night as well. Symphony of the Night is a sequel, right? A direct sequel, and it reuses a lot of the same sprites. So what was the point of going over there and fighting him, though? He didn't drop anything. Well, the Atari 2600 was... I mean, they were both 8-bit, right? But, like, the 2600 was super weak, and the 7800 was more powerful and nicer. So which boss do we have to fight here? Oh, this part. Creepy music. I can get holy water if I want. I don't actually want. I can get more hearts. The hearts are what fuel your sub-weapon use. Ooh, the boomerang. I think I will take the boomerang. Oh boy. I'm scared. Again, some cool parallax. Hey. Why are you scared? Because I gotta fight this scary boss. Just a monster. Ah! Look at that thing. There is some slowdown, which today's kids would call lag. Because it's like, it's pushing around quite a lot for the hardware. So it slows down at times, but that's alright. That is just how games worked back then. We all lived with it, and we didn't cry like babies. We don't cry like babies. We just contact our internet survivor. <laughs> no, but, like, people use the word lag to represent when a game slows down from being overwhelmed by the... It's like the hardware is being overwhelmed. Right. It's not the internet. I always think of lag as being internet-based, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm probably not going to win here. Dang it. Missed. Oh, I did! Yay! Hey. What a surprise. And so because I took this... Oh, crap! <laughs> it didn't kill me, though, thank goodness. I forgot about that. That's just like my boss at the school. No. One final F you before he goes out. Ugh. So then I get to go to a whole new level... A different level two. It's called stage two dash is how they would pronounce that even though it's an apostrophe. Hmm. It's pretty fast too. Yeah, and I mean like I'm I'm getting ready to just quit out, but mm -hmm. these classic enemies. Anyway, the Castlevania is a wonderful series, you know on Xbox One and other and all the platforms you can get a nice collection of like eight of them. Doesn't include this game, though. But if you're interested in playing Dracula X only, you can get it with Symphony of the Night on PlayStation 4, and that collection goes on sale sometimes, so you can get it for a good price. So you can only hold one weapon at a time? Yeah. Okay. But the nice thing about this game compared to previous games, like in previous games, after you get a new sub-weapon, your old weapon just disappears, like it's gone. Mm -hmm. But in this game, your old weapon falls out, and you can pick it up for a few seconds if you prefer to go back to it, you know? Mm -hmm. So, that was a nice little innovation. Oh, by the... Let's see. There's some kind of special move. I can't remember how to do it, but there's a special move you can do, like, kind of a Street Fighter kind of fireball move. Boy, I don't remember it, though. He looks like Street Fighter a little bit. <laughs> a bit, yes. So, anyway, this has been Castlevania Dracula X Rondo of Blood. One of the hottest games for the Turbo Graphics, really awesome, that is included in this collection. Here we go. Again, this is a super graphics game. It was a very short-lived, true 16-bit upgraded version of the Turbo Graphics PC Engine console. They only made six exclusive games for it, and like two more games that supported it. Agreed, Lindar, that can be a true pain. 
So here we go. Ghouls and Ghosts, a notoriously hard series. The first game is called Ghosts and Goblins. The first game, that game, Ghosts and Goblins, is on an arcade 1-Up machine. Ghouls and Ghosts has not been included on arcade 1-Up so far. But remember, this game, it's an arcade port. It was available, like, as a, I think, a launch title on the Sega Genesis. But this version is better. It's more arcade accurate, better graphics and whatnot. The game starts out with Arthur's girlfriend being killed. And here we go. And turn on some turbo. Definitely needed for a game like this. Although you couldn't have done that in the arcade, could you have? When I was in third grade, we couldn't afford to buy an NES, so my mom just rented me an NES and Ghosts and Goblins for my birthday. Super humble, right? But it was only like a year later that we finally got an NES. Oh, don't... Oh crap, I gotta turn into a duck! What do you do once you're a duck? There we go, okay. Thank goodness. Catchy music! Not the best version of this tune ever, but still classic music. Yeah, you're right. Dark Six, I actually did beat this on the Super Graphics. I cheated a little bit. Ooh, I got the torch. And gold armor. Heck yeah, look at that. Gold armor, baby. So now I don't want to have turbo on, because with the gold armor, you can charge your attack up and unleash a special attack. Boom. In your face. Ah. But... I beat it by pausing a lot. Like, I would pause and take in the situation. You know, simulating the slow-mo effect that some controllers would do. Okay, let's try a sword. I mean, you basically have to cheat because it's impossibly hard. One up, I think. Or maybe just points. Charging up attacks like this is a good idea. kill some vultures. It's interesting that the music keeps going even once you paused. So if you get the right items, you can at least start out with a decently fair time. But once you get hit, then it's basically all over from there. Are we at the boss yet? Oh, it's all windy now. Can't fight the wind. Ah, it's little wind devils. That's not fair. Leave me alone. What's in there? Dang it. It's not even hitting it. No, that guy. Oh, great. Now I'm a duck. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then. Sucks to be me. That's okay. It wears off after a little while, at least. In the first game, Ghosts and Goblins, it was a frog that he would turn you into. Oh, wow. Well. But the duck's cuter. Uh, yeah. I don't really want to go back. Ah, what am I doing? Look at that. There's two of me for some reason. Did I change weapons? You have a no. golem. I just want to fight the boss. I don't want to do more of this. Ow, crap. There goes my armor. So, now if I get hit, I die. You're naked. Yes, he's in his boxers. Mm -hmm. There was a PlayStation 2 spinoff series of this called Maximo. Maximo would have been an actual Ghosts and Goblins game. But Capcom Japan wouldn't allow them to use the name, so they had to make it a like different sub series. Yeah, no, I'm sorry, I could have done a lot better. Let's do Lords of Thunder. This game was a big deal. I had it back in the day. I even had the Japanese version of it, which had ever so slightly different cover art. They mildly censored the cover art for the American version. But this game has a phenomenal heavy metal soundtrack. I actually played a little bit of it for Brandy one time, and she wasn't paying any kind of attention. Ah, uh, sorry. You're grading or something. It's after school. Mm. They're really just showing off the music here. Like, they must have put a lot of money into it. And the whoever composes music, super good job. There just aren't a lot of games that sound like this. You guys never confirmed whether you could actually hear the game sound or not. Hopefully so. Look at that. Nice and dramatic. The hero's name is Landis. 
Our neighbors are banging around. Mm-hmm. Oh, and look at that. Did you see that simulated 3D effect on the ground? That was fancy. Somewhat. We'll take it. I just kicked it up, though. Mm -hmm. I can adjust the volume. I just can't tell how loud it is for you. So you have to tell me if it's ever too loud or too quiet. Lots of bad guys. Shmarmy bad guys. Then there's phase two of the intro. The bosses. The Lords of Thunder. In Japan, the game is called Winds of Thunder. They changed it for America. I guess Lords of Thunder is a slightly cooler name. She's pretty. And look at her hair. That's wild. <laughs> That's more like it, Lindar. Mm -hmm. We aim for acceptability around here. As long as the stream is tolerable, I think I've done my job pretty well. I aim for perfection. <laughs> well, you're perfection. Aww. Hey, Deadpool. Good to see you, Nathan. Uh-oh. You really can't hear the sound? I'm turning it up more than... Apparently yeah. there's a heavy metal soundtrack that he needs to play for me again. Yes. While I'm paying attention. It's heavy metal and has a special, unique Japanese feeling to it. It's really great. How about that dramatic introduction? Again, this is worlds beyond what you would see in a Super Nintendo game, cinematically. Then we've got an amazing title screen tune. You gotta do your air guitar. Okay. <laughs> She's like, never! Configuration. Okay, what are our options? Normal, hard, super. I can't remember if there's any difference in the ending or anything, but I've been in on all of them back in the day. There's some kind of code I think you can do by listening to the right tracks and stuff. Yes, this is a side-scrolling shoot-em-up. But it's unique. Like, it, you'll see once we start playing it, it's kind of different from others. You pick from four sets of armor. I can't remember which one I liked more. We'll go with Earth. Earth, Air, Fire, Water. They're all different. Then you've got your hot shopkeeper up there. Life Orb, plus two life. Plus three power. More life is good. Now I don't have enough money for anything else, do I? Just buy more life. Okay, full life meter. You have limited continues, so you can buy extra continues. Let's see how it goes. See, I'm a little guy. And look, if you get on the ground, he actually starts running, which is a really cool touch. And he has a melee attack when enemies get too close to him. The crystals they're dropping help you buy stuff at the shop, so you do want to pick them up. I wonder what happened to Matt Young. I hope he didn't run into another bout of super herpes. Great. Yeah, that's, that's not nice. much to celebrate. So you got some layers of parallax going on in the background. Mm -hmm. Utterly incredible music. Back in the day, CD systems like this, the CD-ROM, I mean, the loading times were intense, right? But the main thing the CD-ROM let them do, they could have more cinematics, you know, more complicated storytelling. And they could just have much higher quality music than what a Super Nintendo or a Genesis could do. And so they really put a lot of money into the music. Like, they made that a selling point for games. So you'd have games with just incredible soundtracks and nowadays you don't get that many games like that that have truly memorable soundtracks although streets of rage 4 is an exception because streets of rage 4 has a wonderful soundtrack oh i took a hit yeah this is a pretty good weapon i've got because it goes in both directions yeah definitely lindar What do you guys think of the graphics? I do enjoy all the parallax, because again, it, was, it wasn't it was something you could count on in this system. So I'm sure they had to use a lot of trickery to make it look good, but it's always nice when they accomplished it so well. Uh, 
Aye, aye, aye. Oh, I wanted that heart. Oh, ah, God. Thanks. Yeah, sped up. I played this game so much, you know, like, I could beat it inside and out back in the day. Ah! That guy sucks. Leave me alone. Thank you. Lost a bunch of life, though. So what's that red meter above my life, I wonder? No screen tearing. Sweet. Yeah, you're right. They Some of these games are quite colorful. And, you know, even the Sega Genesis, the Genesis couldn't show that many colors on screen at once. Only 64 colors at once. But it had kind of a distinctive color palette that it could use. So a lot of Genesis games just have unique colors compared to what games look like on other platforms. A lot of purples and blues. The boss starts out as a regular dude. I don't think he's going to stay that way. Mm -hmm. Ah! Now he's huge. Remember, like I said, the turbo graphics could do really large sprites. They love to remind you. Whoa. Don't have some kind of bomb. There we go. Use the bomb on him. Is that what the red meter was? Maybe? Yeah, it went away. Oh, God. Maybe Dang it. it was. Yes, we did it. Sometimes you have blue gems and sometimes you have red. Were the red ones doing that? Or was it... Either that or they're worth more, maybe. Oh, okay. But the non-linearity is another nice thing. You can tackle the levels in any order. I usually just go clockwise. One of these had my very favorite music in the game. I think it's Bosk. Let's try that real quick. There's life bars in the upper right corner. Let's try a different set of armor. We'll go with fire. So you have to manually buy life refills. It doesn't automatically fill up your life, which is a shame. Plus five. Yep, plus five again. How about that? Okay. Increase that. Get a bomb. Elixir restore. I think elixir is like an extra life. You could get a shield. I don't have that much money. We'll go with a shield. That's what the colored stuff is above our life. It's shield. Oh, okay. All right. And I could even get a little bit. I already have one. Okay, whatever. Let's get out of here. I hope this is the one that had the really great music. Yes, it is. I love this music. You have to play it for me a little later. <laughs> Absolutely. So memorable. I like how a lot of the enemies are little fantasy guys like you are. Because usually in shoot 'em ups, you're just fighting against ships or monsters. Mm -hmm. Look at that, my weapon powered up, and now it does that spraying effect. Nice. I love me some AoE. <laughs> ah! Yeah, yes, that is a good thing. Ah! That wasn't good. Because I got hit, I lost some of my weapon power. But then it looks like I got it right back. No parallax right here for some reason. Yes, I agree, Lendar. Imagine if they spent a ton of money on shoot 'em ups like this still. Because they still make shoot 'em ups. You know, like we streamed Freedom Finger, and that was a really cool game, and we had a fun stream with the developer chatting with us. But that's just, that's made by like one guy and, you know, a few people he had help him, right? But imagine a true AAA resources being put into one of these games. It would, it would look incredible. The problem is the kids, they only want their first person shooting nowadays or their third person online shooting. Like Fortnite. We're just going to get to the boss and fight it and then we'll call it quits for the night. All my students wanted me to play Fortnite with them. 
You said, heck no. I was like, I don't like PvP, but you should play. But I don't like PvP, but you should play. That is the way they think. No. Like, younger kids can't understand not liking competitive gameplay. Look, that guy flew in from the background. That's a neat touch. Oh, I'm so low on life. Ah! <laughs> and I got hit again. Come on, Paul. We, we may not even get to show you the boss. As I recall, this boss is a pain, too. Oh. Uh, game <laughs> over. <laughs> really cool continued screen here. The candles blow out as the timer goes down. Oh. Got a really cool guitar solo playing. It's not a solo, but... So everybody, we've been looking at the TurboGrafx-16 Mini. It's out now in America. It costs $100 at Amazon. It's an Amazon exclusive. It comes with like 40-something games, although some of them are doubles. They're like American and Japanese versions. But a lot of really cool, unique games that are TurboGrafx exclusives. Plus some really cool arcade ports like Fantasy Zone, Space Harrier, Ninja Spirit, that's it. Yeah, and Paris All-Stars. Technically, that's an arcade game, too. Anyway... So there's a whole lot to like here, and if you're an RPG fan, don't forget you've got Ease, Newtopia 1 and 2, and I thought there was another one. So it's got a little bit of something for everybody, lots of great platformers and shoot 'em ups as well. Brandy, thank you for sitting quietly beside me. <laughs> you're welcome. She didn't have much to say, but I think yeah. this was a stream where I could easily talk your heads off, so hopefully you guys enjoyed that somewhat. <laughs> Love you guys. I do recommend this console if you like classic games. Whether or not you had the original Turbo Graphics, if you like classic games, give it a shot. Support them releasing cool products like this. Mm -hmm. And remember, don't hate, appreciate.